One of the big debates in the subject of TV licensing is always the detector vans. I've talked about them loads on this channel and over on my other channel, Chili John Carney channel. Talked about them loads. And so many people say, of course they existed. Of course they existed. And then you get people like me saying they were just empty vans that just drove around with TV licensing on the side to scare people. Well, I've got this video, and the reason I'm talking about it, not just showing you it, is because it's a BBC video. And if I don't offer some commentary or review with regards to the video, then there's a copyright issue. But commentary and review comes under fair use. So I thought we could look at this together. I've only skimmed it. I haven't properly watched it. It's only a few minutes long. And it was on the one show, I think it was about 10 years ago, and I found it from another TV licensed YouTuber the other day. And I thought it was something we could, we could look at together. So anyway, enough gassing. Let's have a look. Yes, there's a TV set on number five. It's in the front room. And they're watching Columbo. If you don't have a TV license, it won't take us long to find you. Now, before we play it, do you believe that? Do you believe that that old trans... Well, it's not a trans, I don't even know what it is. It looks like... It doesn't matter what the van is, does it? But do you believe that him sitting there in front of some panel with a few buttons on it and some green oscilloscope with a two-inch screen will tell him that there's a telly on in that property over there, in the living room, and what they're watching. Do you, Honestly, do you believe that that's possible? Because I don't think that would be possible today without actually seeing the telly in question. And I, there is a bit in here, we'll get to it, because I have skimmed it. And you could detect old CRT tellies, and they could, it was line of sight. They didn't actually use the radio waves and that to detect it. It was a line of sight thing, I believe. And they, they could detect like the colours that were coming through the window and pair it up to the telly. No, you couldn't do that today, could you? Anyway, carrying on. The TV detector van has always seemed a bit like science fiction. A van with a man who can see through walls, who can drive up a street and find anybody watching television without a license and then nab them. Hey, don't do that. Ever since the 1920s, the BBC has depended for its income on the license fee. If you haven't got one, you can be fined a thousand pounds and even get yourself a criminal record. This was the first TV detector, driven by a gentleman in tweed. They were called the Mechanical Sherlock Holmes. Just stopping there again, just briefly, because I'm, I, I didn't expect any different. This is on BBC One, right? So why would he say anything different to that? If you don't have a licence, you can be fined and get into trouble. Of course, that's what he's going to say. It's not the truth, though, is it? What he should be saying is if without a licence, you can't watch or record anything that's being broadcast or use BBC iPlayer. But this is BBC One, and they rig the game. The reason so many people pay it is because the BBC won't fully tell the truth about what you can and can't do if you don't have a TV licence. Then came these alien vehicles in the 1960s with a birdcage described as the latest in high-tech equipment. But a lot of people think that this van doesn't work. It's a gimmick to scare them into getting one. But I can assure you that it does. But many people still refuse to believe the detector vans detect anything. And they're so secret, it's been impossible to look inside. A lot of people say this van doesn't work. It's a gimmick to scare you into buying a license. It is. He was looking through some oscilloscope thing through that. And <laughs> Number 62's got a 12-inch colour portable in the spare room and they're watching Coronation Street. Utter nonsense. The reason it had such a comedy aerial on the top is to grab people's attention as much as possible. So they say, oh, look at that, what's that? Oh, TV detector van, quick, go buy a licence, Mary. But I know a man who bought his own. Van enthusiast Martin Maltus got this for 150 quid and spent six years restoring it. Martin, what on earth possessed you? I've got family history with them because my father used to go out in these vans as a postal officer. You would have a number of addresses to go to that didn't have TV licences. They would pull up outside, detect a television that was working, and then my father would go and knock on the door and ask to see the licence. It could be a bit risky at times, you know, some people were quite nice and generally had licences. Sometimes you had to go out with two people, uh, sometimes you just avoid areas altogether. <laughs> now, while Martin may have restored this beautifully mechanically, the electronics have been dealt with by a different man. So if you were really detecting something, wouldn't you want it to be covert? 
You know, if you were, if you were hiring someone to have a look at your partner because you believe they're cheating on you, would you want them driving around in a van with partner cheating detector written down the side? Of course you wouldn't. They already knew the pro. He's a bit there. The property was unlicensed. They already knew it. So they park a big television detector van with a comedy spinning aerial on the roof outside your house to scare you into going to buy a license. That's all these are. They're a scare tactic. It's propaganda. And it's worked brilliantly. Because so many people still today believe there are television detector vans. <laughs> Even though you can have a telly and not require a license in today's day. Yeah, anyway, carrying on. Hello, Jeff. Hi. Uh, we've got a very sensitive receiver here with two arrows on the roof, okay? And when you see a signal in the centre there, you know you're looking at the television that's tuned to a particular channel. But could you really tell what room it's in? Possibly. They photographed the first wave pattern and compared it to another signal. You put the photograph into the machine and then turn the knob until those graticules line up with the peaks. And then you can determine what range the TV set is from the band. That's really yeah. quite amazing and Heath Robinson is oh, yes, a wonderful yeah. piece yeah. of kit. Yeah. Well, I have placed a portable television down here on the road and your challenge is to detect the television. Mm -hmm. I accept that challenge. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Martin, wheels roll, let's do it. Now, I'm not saying they didn't do that because I can't back that up, possibly. And he's got evidence of it there, so they prob it probably could do that. But how much was photography back then? Because instant film isn't cheap now. Oh, it's probably more now than it was back then. But it's not a cheap thing to do. They're going to do that for every property, just to not really detect a telly anywhere that accurately. Really? And how's this work in blocks of flats then? How's this work in blocks? How many photos are you going to take for blocks of flats? Can you point those aerial? towards floor four or floor five. It's nonsense, isn't it? But it worked, it worked. This experiment is not perfect. The van worked in the days when we watched analog television signals that have now been turned off. So the old television I've planted won't be getting a picture, but it is switched on and might prove the detector vans could at least spot a television that was working. Well, there's a peak coming up now, there. There it is. Ah, yes. There it is. There's a blob. Because look, there's a big yellow box on that driveway. That blob there is that signal over there. Yep, if you switch that TV set off, that peak will disappear. Ah, so. Now, I'm not saying that that's fake. But what I would have liked to have seen, where he said, if you go and turn that TV off over there, that signal will disappear. So I'd like to see them both leave the van and go and turn the TV off and see if that signal did disappear. Because there's a few commenters on this video, it's on UK Calls YouTube channel, that say he's turning that on, or he's doing that himself. He's got a dial or something for that oscilloscope. Again, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, I don't know. All I'm saying is, to prove me wrong, they could have both got out of the van and gone and turned the telly off together, leaving the equipment unmanned to see if that signal went down. I'd have been interested to see that. We may have shed some light on how the old-fashioned vans work, but in this modern digital age, the licensing people are very coy about how they operate. Oh, in this modern day and age, the licensing people are very coy about how they operate. That's what you said. I know how they operate. It's not through detector vans. Well, let's see what the BBC say. They say detecting a digital television now takes as little as 20 seconds, but they wouldn't tell us how or even talk about it. Do detectors work? Did they work? Reality may be more mundane. All it usually takes is a reminder call or letter. Not as dramatic as having a van full of electronics show up outside your house, but a lot more, shall we say, straightforward. So in today's day and age with their modern detectors that take seconds to detect if you've got a TV, which is completely immaterial because you can own TVs without needing to pay for the TV license fee, they won't tell us. They want to be secretive about it. If you had this magical technology that could detect people watching TV without a correct license, wouldn't you be shouting about it from the hilltops? In all the TV license offences that have been to court, and sadly, quite a few of them, not one piece of evidence given from a TV license detector van, or a TV detector van, whatever you call them, has been given in court. Never any evidence from it. Oh, bloody phone. Never any evidence from it. 
And there's many prosecutions happening every day of the week, and not one of them have got evidence from these new fancy TV detector van or the equipment that can do it in seconds. What does that tell you? It tells you everything you need to know. So how can they possibly detect them today, right? This is technically a TV, this laptop. I don't have to have a telly in the house to watch broadcast TV. I can do that through here. Now I can access broadcast TV through a multitude of ways and apps and via VPNs, and they can detect that. Can they? They can detect. Now I've never once said you should watch anything you shouldn't be if you don't. If you don't pay the TV license fee, you can't watch or record anything as it's being broadcast or use BBC iPlayer, but everything else is fair game. You want to watch Coronation Street on ITVX on your telly at night? You can, without a license. They call it a TV license. It's nonsense. It used to be to own a TV. Today it's not. You can own all the TVs you want. It's what you do with your TV or your laptop or your phone that tells you whether you require a license. This is propaganda, and it's been going on since the early days of the BBC to scare people into continually pay for it. And it's still working today. People are still scared by this today. It's crazy. I thought that was an interesting video. I did think that was an interesting video, though. And I'm sorry I had to do so much talking on it, but because it's BBC, and I'm sure the BBC aren't my biggest fans, right? If I don't offer commentary and review on it, then I can't get it under fair use for copyright. So that was why. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because that way, hopefully, I'll see you in another video again soon when I. Ta-da.